Praise the Lord and good morning. Uh, I believe the Lord continues to take care of each one of us and we are grateful for this new day that he has granted us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we bow in thy presence with thanksgiving, acknowledging your kingship in our lives. Lord, we thank you for this new day. May you rule in our hearts, O Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to your daily encounter. Someone once said that uh, there are two wolves that are within each one of us. And the one that grows stronger depends on which one you feed. And today we are going to be looking at the body and the soul. Which one rules in us as soldiers of Christ? Our scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse 44 to 46. It is sown a natural body. It is raised up a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is an, a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a a life-giving spirit. <clears throat> However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterwards the spiritual. As uh, soldiers in God's army, we need to be very clear who rules in us. The spirit or the body, the spiritual or the natural man who is the first Adam. And the question most of us I know will be asking is how can the spiritual rule in the present body which was sown or planted in sin? The natural, as we've been reading, craves for independence, while the spiritual craves for dependence on God. When you enlisted in the boot camp, that is a salvation when you gave your life to Christ, you were transformed and the old became new. That means you are natural, connected with the spiritual. Our bodies from that point henceforth respond directly to the decisions of our spirits. And we want to praise the Lord for this glorious liberty. Uh, Paul goes on to say that we live by grace from this point onwards. But this notwithstanding, he is quick to ask us whether we will continue to live in sin because we live by grace. And he says affirmatively that no, uh, certainly not. You realize that there is clear opposition or tension between your spirit and the body. And we'll use these three scriptures to illustrate this. One is from 1 Corinthians chapter number two verse 14 and 15, where, where Paul says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is, is rightly judged by no one. For the understanding of the spiritual things, the soul is dependent on the spirit. 
if the soul is out of harmony, as we were taken through yesterday, the realm of the spiritual uh, truth is crossed to it. It is important, therefore, brethren, that when we engage in a spiritual battle, we have got to approach the truth with the right attitude. Our souls must be submitted to our spirits, and our spirits must be in union with God. Number two, this is from Jude, verse 16 and 19. In his epistle, Jude speaks about people in church who are grumblers, complainers, walking according their, to their own lusts, sensual persons who cause divisions and not having the Holy Spirit. When the soul of a Christian is not submitted through the, uh, his spirit to God, he becomes a channel through which every kind of carnality and divisiveness can infiltrate the church. And this is true and the underlying cause of divisions in the body of Christ. Number three, we get from the uh, epistle of James, chapter number three and verse 15. And James speaks about a form of wisdom that does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. He depicts a downward slide in three successive stages, from Adri to the self-centered person to the demonic. And how true this is for the Christians of today. Why? It is because we are living at a time where modernity has continued to creep in gradually with those embracing it Rebelling those not embracing it to be fanatics and old school. So that when some things are pointed out as long, we say we have liberty in Christ. And we have heard even in church people saying, my dress, my choice. What with the prosperity gospel being the in thing? When Christians become adri, they lose the vision of eternity. They cannot see beyond the things of this life. And so, success, pressure, wealth, physical health becomes their center and not Christ. They are not interested in what uh, their faith will do for them all they are sorry, they are interested in only what their faith will do for them in this life. And no wonder today you find most people challenging us as Christians because we are suffering uh, through this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, as well as those who, are not, who do not believe in Christ. But Paul puts it very plainly and says, that these people are to be pitied. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. That is from 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and verse 19. Christians like that often consider themselves prosperous and successful. God himself considers them to be pitiable. After the other, the next stage is the egocentric, the self-centered. It is me, myself, and I. For such people, we find that they suppose that godliness is a means of gain. And so, if they are not in charge to benefit, and if they are not getting what they want, then they have no business with the Christ that we preach. That is from 1 Timothy chapter number 6 and verse 5. The self-centeredness 
Remember, we are moving gradually from the other to the self-centered and now to the demonic. So now they will uh, open ways for the demonic. And these people will do anything, but they will convince you that they are doing it for Christ and for the good of the church. And it is my prayer, brethren, as we continue to stay at home, that we will not allow ourselves to uh, sleep through these three various phases, moving from the other, then we become self-centered until now we are completely worn, out, worn by the devil himself. And I know we would want to ask, do Christians ever need deliverance from demons? And the answer is yes. Because this downward stride from the other to the self-centered to the demonic it exposes both you as an individual and even the entire congregation, like this one of ours, or St. James Cathedral and others, to the activities of demons. We have to remain alert, brethren, lest we too become like Judas, Judas Iscariot. He followed Christ, but he was ruled by the natural. So as I wind up, who is ruling in your soul? Is it the spirit or the body? Take care, take watch, so that you do not lose your focus and you stride through the other, the self-centeredness, and finally we lose you uh, to the demonic world. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen.